Hello student, today I am going to talk on the topic of programs to meet individual needs, determine the unique needs and establishing the goal and objective. There are many reasons for measurement and assessment in physical education. The increasing motivation determine strength and weakness of the classified and this in terms determine the degree of achievement, evaluation of the instruction and the program. In adapted physical education, measurement and assessment strategy are often employed to assist in the determination of unique needs and in providing basic for instruction. Students suspected of having unique physical and motor needs should be referred to appropriate committee for further testing, measurement, and assessment at the refer, which are level usually called screening documents. There is a need for an in-depth evaluation to determine if the student has unique needs in physical education. The first step in determining a unique needs is to identify the present level of educational performance. We identified present level of educational performance by testing. This crucial step requires skill in selecting the appropriate instrument and then understanding what the test measure. Very often in physical education, we select domain or criteria, reference test because they are designed to differentiate between ability and skill measure by those instruments. That is, the test is designed to measure physical fitness, perceptual motor performance, coordination, or perhaps locomotion skills. This type of test also describes how the student being tested compared with other children or the standard of performance. Number one, a student must have unique need to be eligible for adapted physical education service. Second point, that is, once a need, unique need is determined, the need serves as the basic for IEP, that is, in-depth evaluation physical. Goes on this aspect of unique needs are eligible for goal and objective. In the physical education curriculum, once eligibility has been established based on a documented unique needs, appropriate goal and objective are written. Typically, annual goal and short-term objective are selected to improve the area of unique needs. Students in adapted physical education often have the same goal as the regular program, that is, to improve physical fitness or ball handling skill. The objective would usually be different because other activity might need to be subsequent for those in the regular program or different performance criteria might need to be adopted. After the goal and objective have been determined, the most appropriate placement for obtaining them is selected. Every effort should be made to keep the student in a regular class placement. It should attempt to modify activity and methodology so that the student objective can be made in the regular class. That is, a student who uses a wheelchair, for instance, who probably meet goal and objective for individual sports, example, swimming, weightlifting, track and field, in a regular placement. But the same student might be assigned to a most restricted setting when team sports example volleyball soccer football are play in the regular classes another important consideration 
during placement is the input of the student and his or her parents. What should he be comfortable with? The entire process can be compared with that of starting a car engine. We know that when we turn the ignition key, the criteria for success is that the engine start. If the engine does not start, we must determine what is preventing the performance of the engine and correct the condition before the car can be driven. Someone has to evaluate the component or part that contribute to starting the engine, battery, spark, plug, wiring, starter, etc. Once the faulty part is found and replaced or corrected, the engine should start. In the same way, when the student do not perform to expected standard, we must analyze the various components to determine which one are faulty and then correct those components before the child is able to function at normal level. Procedure to determine and meet unique need of student are as follow. Number one, select a criteria or domains reference taste that measure the skill and ability you are interested in evaluating. Number two, administrate that taste. Number three, study the result to determine which skill and ability are deficient. Number four, analyze each area found to be deficient to determine the component that contribute to the ability or skill. Number five, once the underdeveloped components are identified, establish goal and objective that are specified to this component. Number six, select activities that contribute to progress towards this goal and objective. Number seven, develop a teaching sequence that permit objective monitoring or progress. Goal and objective provide the foundation of measurement. Goals are outcome statements that define what an organization is trying to accomplish both programmatically and organizationally. Goals are usually a collection of related program, a reflection of measure action of the organization in contrast to the goal. Objectives are very precise, time-based, measurable action that support the completion of a goal. Objective number one, it should be related directly to the goal. Number two, it should be clearing, concise, and understandable. Number three, it should be stated in terms of result. Number four, it should begin with an action verb. Number five, it should specify a data for accomplishment. Number six, it should be measurable. Importantly, goal and objective become less useful when they are unrealized or ignored for instance. If your university has set goal and objective related to class size but it is unable to ever achieve them, their effectiveness as a management is significantly decreased. The goal is an objective, something to drive from goals are set to direct or individual attention to relevant activities and increase motivation to achieve a certain result. This goal can be both long and short term and may reflect both outcome and process the long term or outcome goal or daily action or behavior that direct you to the final result. Once the physical educator has determined what the present level of educational performance is, long-range goal can be developed. Goals are specific target behavior that the child should be able to demonstrate after instruction has been given. Goals should be written in behavioral terms that are measurable and reflect an improvement over the present level of educational performance. School personnel, parents, and the handicapped students should agree on annual goal based 
own evolution at the beginning of the school year. Everyone is then clear about what behavior the physical education program is concerned with. It is not mandatory that the student reach its annual goal. However, goals are necessary before the step leading to goal can be selected. That is, before we can decide how to get where we are going, we must know what our destiny is. The mission of the physical education program for handicapped students is to provide opportunity and experience that develop skill that can be used to participate in independence, recreational, physical activity in community setting. However, there simply is not enough time to teach handicapped students all of the functional skills they will need in the natural community recreational environment. Therefore, goals need to be prioritized. Top priority should be given to motor behavior that is particularly crucial to maximizing participation in everyday physical activity as well as recreational environment. The annual goal is a specific predetermined learning experience that if master extend a child present level of performance, there is an intricate balance between present level of performance, goal and objective. Because goals are specific to the needs of each handicapped student, any given individual can have a series of goals that represent different level of performance in each of the curriculum area. Before selecting goal for a learner, the teacher must determine at what level the student is performing. When a student demonstrates an inability to perform a specific behavior, the teacher must determine what prerequisite sites are needed for the individual to achieve mastery of the task. Until this question is fully answered, it is restated until the student present level of performance is discovered. Then a reasonable long-range goal is set. At. The short-term objective follow. They represent increasingly difficult step leading from present level of performance to each annual goal. It is necessary to keep detailed record on each learner to monitor where the child is performing in the learning sequence, the mastery of objective is prerequisite to next complex or difficult objective. In addition to the heretical linkage between the present level of performance, the annual goal and each of the short-term objective, the annual goal and short-term objective must incorporate four concepts. Number one, poses and action, that is what. Number two, establishing condition under which the action should occur, that is how. Number three, establishing a criteria for mastery of specific tasks, that is at what level. Number four, lie outside the child present level of educational performance. The condition under which the action should occur describe how the learner is to perform at a task. It is important to be implicit changing the condition make a task easy or more difficult, inefficient or efficient, simple or more complex. Statement of condition are particularly necessary to ensure appropriate level of difficulty in developmental sequence that lead to long range goal. If the conditions are not specified, it is impossible to determine what the true capability of a student is and what activity are needed to advance the developmental level. If the conditions are not precise, it is unclear how the student is to perform the task. And once again, the value of the objective is lost.
There are three essential features to sound instructional objective. Number one, there must be justification that the objective are relevant to the learner. Number two, objective must possess the capability of being reproduced when implemented by independent instructor. Number three, there must be agreement or what is to be taught and when it has been mastered by the student. Measurement and Instruction One of the best way to determine whether an individual physical education program is effective is to gather progress data on a regular basis. It is relatively easy to determine whether instructional objectives are being met with record are kept of the number of trials required to learn each step as well as whether the learner pass or fail each trial. The data based generation is one program that includes numerous motor skill activity and tasks that are sequenced in such a way as to facilitate record keeping. Systematic data gathering is necessary to ensure the development of physical motor skill and sports activity as well as the development of cognitive aspect of rules and application of strategy of game. A number of useful texts exist that explain how to observe, record, chart and graph behavior. Weasel and Kili also support the data-based physical education process. These two authors have proposed an achievement-based curriculum, that is ABC, model for designing an entire physical education program that systematizes the concept and step necessary to implement individual program. They stress the importance of evolution and the needs for the individualized approach towards teaching physical education that meet the need of all students, including those with handicap condition. This approach greatly facilitated the mainstreaming process if instruction is individualized for all person, then handicapped students are easily included in the regular class. The model utilizer criterion refers testing for measuring present educational performance level as well as individual progress. This system like data-based gymnasium program enable physical educator to be accountable for what happened in the day-to-day -day class experience of each handicapped person in their class. Present level of educational performance are the functional capability of a student along a developmental continue at a particular point in time. Determining goal and objective for student can be determined. Standardized domain and criteria refer test may be helpful in deciding whether a child is in need of specialized program. However, Content reference assessment such as task analysis or hierarchical analysis is necessary to determine the precise level at which a student is functioning. Once a student level of functioning are determined, goal and objective are agreed on an activity that lead to their attainment are selected. A teaching sequence that permit ongoing measurement is designed shifting criteria and condition program that are carefully sequenced enable constant measurement of progress. All this information and importance of this process should be explained to parents. Programs should be evaluated to determine their success in assisting handicapped students to meet the physical demand of recreational and domestic environment in the community. With this, I conclude my lecture. Thank you.